My name is Daniel Perez. I am a sinner, have been saved by the grace of God. Jesus Christ saved me from the power of sin and from the wrath of God. God has given me His Spirit by which I can cry, My Father, Abba Father. This is my testimony. I want to bear witness of God's grace in my life. When I was arrested for the second time, I was committed to the Texas Youth Commission. It was there where I, I first heard a gospel presentation or the mention of Jesus saving me. I had never really been exposed to any type of Christianity in my life, had never attended church, uh, just those Catholic experiences which were very, very sad in a funeral or a wedding which was very much of a party scene, but I did for, hear about Christ there. Um, it was there that I realized that if I kept taking the path that I was taking, I would have not ended up in a good place. I would have ended up being a drug addict for the rest of my life or in prison, possibly dead. I was hearing of friends being imprisoned. A friend of mine died. My older brother had gone to prison, so I knew I had to change. I knew something had to change. You see, I loved my life. I loved myself too much to let me go down that path. I did not want to ruin my life. That's the last thing I wanted to do. So I thought religion can help. It wouldn't hurt. So that's what I did. I started attending these church meetings and uh, I started reading the Bible. I said, I, I need to change. I started telling people I was a Christian and I responded to a gospel that was a very man-centered gospel. And I would be rededicating my life every weekend. Every Sunday I went to church, I was rededicating my life, repeating the sinner's prayer over and over again. I mean, I thought that's what Christianity was about. That's what I was supposed to do. Every week, just renewing, refreshing my, co rec my commitment to Christ. And, um, but, but nothing changed. Nothing changed. I invited Jesus to come into my heart, I don't know how many times, but I only mentioned that because it was my responding to this defective gospel where I learned to be a Pharisee. I learned to be conformed to law. I, I was following blue collar law. I, I thought to myself, I clean up my talk, I clean up my walk, God will be happy with me and my life will be right. My life will go well. And my life was going well. As I started changing, people noticed the pats on the back just made me more prideful, just made me more proud, more self-righteous. I was proud of what I was doing. I was, people were proud of me. And I thought, people are proud of me. God must be proud of me. God must be happy with me. These preachings that I was sitting under were more like life coaching lessons than the one true gospel. I was never convicted of sin. I never saw myself as a sinner. I saw my past sins as mistakes, but not as attacks against God, not as wickedness, not as vileness, not as what the Bible says, crimes against the holy God. I didn't see him that way. I didn't see him that way at all. So. I kept reading my Bible, I kept hanging around Christians there, and um, I really changed. I thought that this is what, about, what Christianity was about, never realizing that it is not me that makes myself a Christian, but it is God who makes Christians. That never came to my mind. That never, regeneration was not preached there. I remember uh, getting out, completing the program in the Texas Youth Commission and being committed to a halfway house in San Antonio, Texas. And there I just kept on with my legalism. I kept on. Like the Bible says in Mark 7, honor God with my lips, but my heart was very far from Him. My heart was very much enslaved to sin. I was like a caged wolf. I was like a caged wolf just wanting to get out. But the law restrained me. But in secret, I tell you the truth, in secret, I grievously sinned against God. My life was a declaration of war against God, and I didn't know it.
It's not as though I was pretending, trying to deceive people that I was a Christian. In fact, I thought I was. I thought that if I conformed to everybody else in the group, everybody else that sits in the church, I myself would be a Christian and would be pleasing to God. Nobody ever told me, nobody ever told me what being born again was like. I never heard anything on regeneration. I thought basically I cleaned myself up by keeping God's law, by keeping their blue collar laws. And uh, I was committed to the Texas Youth Commission. I started attending the groups there. I started holding even mini Bible studies there myself with other young people there. I got privileges there. I started attending a local church and that is where I met my wife, uh, Barbara, who is my wife now. And the same thing there. I fit right in. And now falling in love with Barbara, I wanted to impress her. I started memorizing scripture. I started quoting scripture in front of people, in front of her. I started being more zealous without knowledge, but more zealous nevertheless. I had a form of godliness, but no power. No power of God in my life. Every chance I got, I would sin against the Lord. You see, I don't deserve as a person to be sitting here testifying and bearing witness of God's grace in my life as an object of His love. If I got what I deserved, I would be in hell right now, bearing witness of His justice as an object of God's wrath. If I got what I deserved, if everyone got what they deserved, that's where they'd be. But thanks be to God and His love. Thanks be to God that even His preventive grace back then kept me, just yeah. kept me. I could have died, I could have been in hell, but God kept me. Yeah. God kept me. And I got to give Him glory for that, that even in the midst of all those, that false teaching and and even that shallow fellowship, and what I mean by shallow fellowship, there was no correction. I, I remember I would see sin in the group that I was involved in, and they would take it very lightly. There were respectable sins were allowed, uh, gluttony, uh, certain worldliness was allowed, and uh, I thought that was what Christianity was about. That was the picture I got, a TBN, Kenneth Copeland, Benny Hinn type of Christianity. That's what I thought it was about. And therefore, I was very comfortable, very comfortable in my sin. Very comfortable because the God that I worshipped, as the Bible says, people honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. In vain they worship me. I worshipped a God that did not exist. A God in my own making, in my mind, that was very much like me that was okay with my sins, that, and I would tell people, well, Jesus knows my heart. God knows my heart. Not knowing that He indeed knows my heart, that my heart is deceitfully wicked above all things, as Jeremiah 79 declares, that out of my heart come all these things, that what I needed was a heart transplant. I needed a new heart. So I lived in this in this darkness. I lived in this Phariseeism for several years. I got out of the halfway house. Um, I married Barbara. I married my wife. We started a life together. I finished my parole. I came in San Antonio. I got a job working for the local water company. Everything was going well. We were attending the local church. I was getting promotions at work. I was we had a child, the Lord blessed us with a child, so I thought everything was smooth. So, just like any false convert does, after, after you see, to try to live the life of Christ without the Spirit of Christ is impossible. It just is. To try to live a Christian life without the power of God, it cannot be done. It would be a form of godliness, but it won't be true godliness. And that was me. After a couple of years, I stopped reading my Bible. You see, I stopped praying. The crutch that I once needed when I was locked up, the crutch that I once needed 
to improve my life. I didn't need any more. And that's how I got rid of the Christ in my own making as a crutch. I cast him away. I didn't need him anymore. I can stand on my own. I can stand on my own strength. That's exactly what I did. I stopped going to church. My wife would exhort me. My wife would pray for me. I gave her a hard time. I tried to convince her not to go to church, but I just completely stopped going. The fellowship that I was involved in, no one came after me. No one came to correct me. No one came to tell me from the scriptures, you know, at least brother, you shouldn't be living that way. Nobody did. No one did. In fact, I would run into them at a local grocery store or something. They still call me brother, even though they knew I was living in complete sin. But that's what I did. I thought God was happy with me. I started attending local bars with buddies at work, my drinking buddies, started going shooting pool on Friday nights. I became a derelict father to my children. Uh, but you know, if you would have asked me back, back then if I was a Christian, I would have said yes. I am a Christian. Maybe just backslidden, but I'm a Christian. You see, because I thought I was good. I don't beat my wife. I don't abuse my children. I provide a home for my family. What more do you want? I'm moral. But how many people are lost like that? The Bible clearly tells us that all our righteousnesses, apart from Jesus Christ, are as filthy garments before God. Just that, polluted garments, unacceptable, detestable to the Lord. And in all my righteousnesses, that's what I was. I was a filthy rag before God. He wasn't happy with me. He wasn't. I was basically, what I was doing, I was following the course of this world. I was dead in my trespasses and sins. And... I was a lover of myself. I was a God hater. The Bible declares that there's no one good, no not one, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. That was me. That was me. And in the point of my life when I almost destroyed my family, <clears throat> I completely had left religion behind. I was lost in my sin. I wanted to continue in my sin. I saw my wife, my children as a burden, mm -hmm. and the Lord awakened me. I can only ascribe it to the grace of God that He would awaken my mind, take the veil off of the eyes of my mind and see my sin, see who I was, see what I was doing. I was about to divorce my wife and the Lord just turned on a light in my mind. What am I, what am I, what am I doing? I thought to myself. So... I saw the seriousness of what I was about to do. I was about to destroy my family. I didn't want that. And I don't know if it was self-righteousness, but I said, you know, I got to go back to what worked before. I got to go back to religion. I started hearing Christian sermons on the radio. I started picking up a Bible. I asked my wife to forgive me. And um, I remember hearing one sermon, a guy preach, a preacher preaching on John chapter 3. John chapter 3, a preacher was preaching on the radio, and uh, it was about the new birth. He said, unless a man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Sure. Read it. He expounded on that, something that I had never realized, something that my mind had never really comprehended, that I must be born again. And I was convinced through the word of God that I did not have that new birth that I was not a creature, a new creature in Christ. I was not made new. I wasn't that. I didn't have a, a heart, a desire to follow after Christ. I had a desire to preserve my life, to preserve my reputation, to be looked upon as moral, to be looked upon as good and decent, as a good family man, as a good father, as a good provider. But to desire to follow after God, I didn't have that. I did not have, and I, I realized I never had it. My repentance back then was a, God, a worldly sorrow. That's all it was. It was a worldly sorrow. It wasn't a godly repentance. I didn't run to Christ because I wanted to make peace with God. But I ran to Christ because I wanted Him to improve my life. And that's what 
I was promised Jesus has a wonderful plan for your life. Come to Him. You'll be happy. You'll receive joy. You'll receive peace. But maybe as the world gives, but I didn't receive it as God gives. Not as I know now. Yeah. <clears throat> Not as I know now. So I thank God for awakening me and helping me and leading me back to His Word. And I knew I was not born again. I wasn't a new creature in Christ. And I knew I needed that. I knew I needed the Lord. I knew that my, maybe my criminal record here on this earth was clean. It was spotless. But my criminal record in heaven, it was mounting up. My sins had mounted up. I did not have the grace of God upon me. I had the wrath of God right. upon me. And, and it was just a matter of moments till I would encounter it. The Bible says that life is a vapor, a vapor. It is here for a little while and then it vanishes. That's what it says. And I became convinced that I had no time to spare. Note, as the scripture says, seek him while he may be found. And that while seemed very short to me back then. And so I, I sought God with all my heart. That evening, I understood completely the gospel of Jesus Christ, that he had truly died for my sins, that he had lived for me, that he had, when he had nothing to do with my sin, he had nothing to do with me doing drugs, he, had no, he did not lead me in my sin, yet he died for me. An innocent, spotless lamb died for me when I didn't deserve it. And his kindness just melted my heart and I wanted to know him. I was afraid of meeting him apart from Jesus Christ. I called out for forgiveness and the Lord saved me. The Lord saved me and the way I know the Lord saved me is that I was born again. Now I just don't know about him. I know him. I know him. I'm beyond just having a superficial belief, a belief in spiritual things. Now I know the living God and His Son, Jesus Christ. His Spirit lives in me. As an old Puritan once said, he said this, if you ask me to write a play like Shakespeare did, like Hamlet or Lanier, I couldn't. If you tell me to live the life of Christ, I couldn't. But if you give me the mind of Shakespeare, I could write a play like that. If you give me the spirit of Christ, I can live a life like that. And that's what I received from the Lord. Yeah. The spirit of Jesus Christ to live for him. Yeah. To live for him. Yeah. My wife received the greatest gift she could receive on this earth. A godly husband. Yeah. Apart from Christ, I would be a monster to my children. But now they have a father that loves the Lord. Yeah. And I thank God for that. I thank God for his grace for sending His only begotten Son to die for my sins. It was my sins upon His shoulders, upon that cross. My sin did upon Him. And He took the wrath of God for me, for me. Just think about it. The wrath of God. If I would end up in hell, I would never finish paying the wrath of God. Never. But 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ paid for my sins upon a wooden cross. Turn to Christ while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Wicked man, repent of your ways. Unrighteous man, forsake your thoughts. Turn to the living God.